A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between a revocable living trust versus an irrevocable living trust, and which one do I need? That's a very common question, and understanding the difference between a revocable trust and an irrevocable trust matters because a lot of people think, oh, I don't need an irrevocable trust, I just need a revocable one, or I don't need a revocable one, I just need an irrevocable one. So today, in this video, I'm gonna break down these two very different types of trusts, their benefits, uh, their disadvantages, and which one might be the better fit for your goals. Um, you're gonna walk away with a lot of clarity and confidence to make informed decisions about your family's future, making sure that your assets are protected, avoiding unnecessary taxes, and ensuring that your kids get their inheritance. Before we start, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our new videos with practical estate planning tips. So I'm gonna first start with the living trust. In other words, the revocable trust, okay? When you hear about living trusts, uh, it's a revocable trust. And one of the major benefits of a living trust is you maintain control and flexibility. So I'm gonna walk through what a living trust is. So. Let's say, for example, you're starting your estate planning journey and you have no idea what a living trust is. So a living trust is basically a legal document that you can use to write down your wishes in terms of who gets your assets when you pass and who's gonna manage the whole process of making sure that the people you want to receive your assets will be able to do so. And so that is usually what we call a living trust or a revocable trust. It offers a lot of flexibility and ensures that your assets bypass probate administration. Um, you might not know what probate is. Probate is basically a place where you don't want your family to go to in order to receive their inheritance when you pass away because probate's expensive. It takes a long time. It's gonna create, create stress, uh, family dramas, and a lot of headache for your kids. So here's how a living trust works. Okay, so you would set up a trust uh, by drafting it, whether yourself or hiring an attorney to do so. If you wanna learn the entire process, by the way, to learn how to set up a trust, check out my free trust class. It, uh, the link is on the bottom of this video. So after you set up your trust, you sign it, you notarize it, the next thing you're gonna do is you are going to transfer assets into the trust, okay? Your house, your money, for example, can go into the trust and your trust controls who gets it when you pass away. Um, now, a good thing about a living trust is as long as you're alive, you can change it, you can remove assets, you can add assets, you can dissolve the entire trust if you wanted to and revoke everything. That's up to you, okay? That's, that's the beauty of a revocable living trust that you don't get when you uh, set up an irrevocable trust, which I'm gonna talk about in, the future, uh, in a few moments. So avoiding probate is great with a living trust. Maintaining control during your lifetime is great. A lot of people don't wanna give up control, uh, and so they would rather set up a revocable trust where they can be the trustee managing their own, their own assets. Nothing goes to your kids or your beneficiaries until after you pass away, because that's one of the benefits of setting up a revocable living trust. Another benefit is incapacity planning. If you become incapacitated, let's say you have dementia, you're in a coma, or you have some sort of brain injury, and you can no longer manage your assets, a living trust ensures a smooth transition by empowering your successor trustee to manage your assets for you. So this avoids the need for a court-appointed guardian or conservator. So a lot of uh, parents, for example, they don't have a trust, they own a house, have money, they have no power of attorney, and they have dementia. When that happens, your kids can't automatically step in. Did you know that they have to go to probate court and get a conservatorship, a guardianship over you in order to make decisions for you? That is awful. Okay? It takes a lot of time and money to go through conservatorship proceedings. And so what you want to do is you want to set up the trust put the house at least into the trust. If you do get incapacitated, your kids can step in or your spouse can step in to manage that house for you. 
Another benefit of setting up a revocable living trust is it simplifies the family planning process. What I mean by that is living trusts are really helpful, especially for families with young kids, because it ensures that your assets are distributed to your kids based on how you want it to be distributed to them when the time comes. So a lot of parents, uh, they would come to us, they have young kids, and what we do is we would set up a trust for them that allows the parents to dictate who manages for the kids, especially when they're minors, when they can receive their inheritance. Um, the Bible says that when you, in when you inherit too quickly, especially when you're young, you're just gonna squander it because you don't have the wisdom to manage it, uh, to be wise with your inheritance. And so a lot of families, a lot of parents, they would reach out to us and we would set standards as to when the kids can actually control their own inheritance, uh, as well as what they can use the inheritance for, like for education, their health care, their down payment on a house, uh, starting a business, right? Whatever your values and principles are for your kids, you can actually put it into your trust and make sure that you can plan ahead for them just in case you're not here to help them along the way. Another benefit is, uh, like I mentioned before, very flexible, revocable living trusts allow you to make changes anytime you'd like as long as you're alive and as long as you have capacity. Now, I do wanna let you know some of the downsides of a living trust, of a revocable trust, is that the assets are not protected from creditors. There's no asset protection. A lot of people think that by setting up a revocable trust, if they get sued, the creditors can't go after those assets. That's not true. Because it's revocable, it's still under your control. It's still under your management. It's still under your ownership. It's part of your estate. And therefore, if you do get sued in a car accident or someone um, gets injured on, on your properties and sues you, they can go after your assets in your revocable trust. Okay. Also, if you have an estate tax problem, uh, or inheritance tax problem, what happens is uh, anything inside your revocable trust would be subject to federal and state uh, estate taxes upon your death. In other words, death taxes. When you pass, if your estate is over a certain threshold, it would be subject to estate taxes when you pass away. So that's some of the downsides of a revocable living trust. Now, I want to share with you um, the other type of trust, which is the irrevocable trust. So an irrevocable trust is more rigid, but offers very effective tax benefits and creditors protection, asset protection. You know, once these assets are transferred though, uh, they no longer belong to you. Um, it's good because it shields you from lawsuits and estate taxes, but you give up control. Okay, so I, I wanna go through some of these pros and cons of a irrevocable trust so you can make the best decision for your family. One of the benefits of an irrevocable trust is uh, it provides tax savings. So assets that are placed inside an irrevocable trust are removed from your taxable estate, potentially saving your heirs from hefty estate taxes. Okay, This makes it a very popular tool for high net worth individuals aiming to minimize tax burdens. It can also uh, give you income tax benefits, especially if you create charitable remainder trusts or charitable lead trusts. Uh, those are great where uh, you can donate to charity but at the same time get income tax uh, benefits. So tax savings is one of the main reasons why people set up irrevocable trusts. Another reason, like I mentioned, asset protection from creditors because you no longer legally own these assets, creditors can't access them. Even if you face lawsuits or bankruptcy, this is especially valuable for those in high-risk professions like doctors or business owners, putting some of your assets into an irrevocable trust could help you uh, with lawsuits. Also, Medicaid planning, irrevocable trusts are very important and uh, a very useful tool for Medicaid planning. If you transfer assets into an irrevocable trust well before applying for Medicaid, this will ensure that those assets will not be counted towards your eligibility. Okay, so if you uh, if your assets exceed a certain amount, you don't qualify for Medicaid. And so what some people do is they would move some of these assets into a Medicaid asset protection trust in order to qualify and not just qualify, but 
when they pass away, Medicaid will try to recover against your estate for payment um, of, of what they spent on your nursing care. And so uh, to shield it from Medicaid recovery, you put it into a Medicaid Asset Protection Trust, you get those Medicaid benefits, and your family does not have to pay back uh, any money that you had used from the Medicaid program. So that's a legal way to protect your assets from Medicaid recovery. Another reason for irrevocable trusts, it, avoids, it helps your family avoid probates and ensures privacy. So this is very similar to a revocable trust. Both a revocable and an irrevocable trust allows you to um, help your kids avoid probate and ensures privacy, meaning the administration of your estate after you die in terms of distribution to your beneficiaries are not going to be in the court system. Um, your assets are not going to be publicly available for people to look up. Uh, so there is a form of privacy for both revocable and irrevocable trusts. Uh, and last but not least, an irrevocable trust does help you protect um, these family legacy assets like family heirlooms, real estate, business your interests to make sure that it's passed down according to your wishes. You can also do that with a revocable trust as well. Now, one of the drawbacks and disadvantages of an irrevocable trust is that you give up control of your assets. So if you want to avoid estate taxes, asset protection, a lot of times you need to name another trustee to manage your assets while you're alive. A lot of people don't like that. And so um, that's something that you have to know before you move any assets into an irrevocable trust. And then making changes to an irrevocable trust requires court approval and beneficiary consent. So it does uh, have a lot of drawbacks when setting up an irrevocable trust. Also, setting up an irrevocable trust can be more complex, it takes more time, it takes more planning, involves more people, involves your not just your estate planning attorney, but your CPA and financial advisor. And so it is more complex and costly. Um, it definitely costs a lot more to put it together than a revocable trust. So which trust fits your needs? I have no idea. I'm not your attorney. Uh, this is not legal advice, and so that's something that you'll have to figure out yourself uh, or have an attorney figure it out that for you. But keep in mind all these things that we talked about today, right? If you, um, if you set up a revocable living trust, it gives you flexibility, easy to access your assets, and plan for incapacity to make sure that your assets avoid probate and that it goes to the right people. So for most people, all they need is a revocable trust. But there are situations where you need an irrevocable trust, for example, asset protection, minimizing estate taxes, planning for Medicaid. And so choose your own adventure, right? Uh, choose which one works for you, but be informed before you do anything, do your own research or talk to an attorney who can guide you. Now, if you wanna set up a revocable living trust, check out my free revocable trust class. Uh, this is only for revocable trusts. I do not uh, teach people how to set up their own irrevocable trust, but if you want to learn how to set up your own revocable trust, check out my free trust class. It's, it's an hour-long class that really dives deep into the trust-making process and highlights mistakes you need to avoid. And at the end of the class, I do offer a paid course where uh, there's pre-recorded videos that walk you through step-by-step how to make your own living trust with confidence. Okay, so if you wanna check that out, uh, please do so. Now, I, I wanna share something with you from scripture. Since we're talking about irrevocable trust planning, um, in Romans eleven twenty nine, it says that the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So there are certain gifts that God gives us that are irrevocable, just like our inheritance that we leave to our kids when we die it's set in stone the terms are irrevocable and would you like to know the gift that god wants to give us it's in ephesians 2 8 to 10. Uh, god says that for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god not a result of work so that no one no one may boast for we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So this free gift that God wants to give us is salvation. That he wants us to know him. He wants us to follow him. 
He wants to save us from our sins. And he has already done that um, with the death of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Did you know that when Jesus died, the moment that he died, Jesus says, it is finished. What did he mean by that? Well, he was talking about how he redeemed all of us who have faith in Christ from, uh, from the wages of our sin, which is death. Right? He has freed every believer of Christ from the consequences of sin. And so that is the free gift that God wants to give us. And that gift, lucky for us, it is irrevocable. When Jesus died on the cross, it became irrevocable. That gift cannot be taken away. And so I want to share the good news with you that you are saved from your sins by God's grace. He loves us so much, according to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die on the cross for us, that whoever believes in him and his sacrifice will be saved, will have eternal life, and will not perish in hell. All of us have sinned against God. We have broken his laws. We have hurt others. We have hurt God. We have disobeyed and rebelled and have not followed him throughout our lifetimes. Even tonight for myself, you know, I, I sinned against God. I was not uh, loving in my conversation with my wife. And so um, I'm a sinner. And so are you. And so we need the grace of God, the love of Christ, and to know that we are saved by faith in Christ of what he did on the cross for us. Just like here in Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, it is not anything that we have done to earn the forgiveness of our sins. We have sinned against God and we deserve to be punished in eternal hell. But God loves us so much that he does not want us to end up in hell. He gives us this free gift of salvation. And all we need to do is to receive it through, Christ, through faith in Christ. And you know what the beauty is? This faith in Christ, that, he, that this knowing and this trusting that Jesus is the only one who can save us from our sins, this gift, uh, or sorry, faith is even, even faith is a gift because it says here in Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Even our faith in Jesus is a gift from God. He's the one who draws us to him. He's the one that gives us faith. And so this beautiful gift, I, I wanna share with you uh, that you have salvation in Christ if you feel empty, if you feel shamed or guilt in what you've done in the past, don't. Uh, you have forgiveness in Christ. Believe that Jesus died for you. Believe that your sins can be forgiven. Believe that God wants to forgive you of your sins. And so if God himself wants to forgive you, you can forgive yourself. So um, I encourage you to seek out Jesus Christ, who is your Lord and Savior, and just watch um, what he does with you, uh, how he will re renew your mind. And I pray that you will follow him so that you will walk in good works. All right, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Uh, if you have any other questions about revocable trust or irrevocable trust, let me know. Uh, I would love to make more videos about this. Uh, leaving a comment below does not make me your attorney, does not make me uh, does not make you my client, okay? Uh, you'll first have to uh, hire us as your attorney for us to be your, your lawyer. And so all of this was not legal advice. It was just general information to help you along your estate planning journey. All right, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye.